We just found the biggest clue ever that someone lived on Mars. Or should I say, something. Because if you're picturing skinny red extraterrestrials with big goofy eyes, forget it. The Martians we're talking about looked more like this, a tiny microbe. I know, a total bummer, but this could change everything. See that weird pattern on the rock? The one that looks like leopard spots? Experts think it was left behind by ancient life. And no, it's not like someone painted it, the way early humans drew on cave walls. These little marks could actually be leftovers from microbes. Signs that some pretty wild chemical reactions were happening back when they were formed. And don't worry, we'll get to that in just a second. So NASA actually found this evidence over a year ago, and they were thrilled, as this was exactly the kind of weird rock they'd been hoping to see on Mars. They thought this weird pattern might be a biosignature. In other words, a clue that life was once there. That could mean an element, a molecule, some substance, or in this case, a funky leopard print pattern on a rock. But scientists were cautious back then. After all, you can't just go around shouting, we found life on Mars, without being absolutely sure. It could have just been, well, a cool looking Martian rock, right? So, they studied this sample again and again. And by they, I mean more than 1,000 scientists from NASA and partner institutions all over the world. And recently, they finally came out with a paper that basically says, listen, we can't find another explanation. And that's it. With no other explanation left, this might just be the best evidence we've ever had that something really did live on Mars. The sample, nicknamed Sapphire Canyon, was collected by the Perseverance rover in July 2024. It was taken from rocky cliffs along the edges of the Naretva Vallis River Valley, a region shaped long ago by water that once flowed into Jezero Crater. And we're talking like more than 3 billion years ago. Scientists believe that back then, Naretva Vallis was filled with rushing rivers carrying mud, sand, and gravel into the lake. When the water eventually dried up, it left behind the rocky outcrop where Sapphire Canyon was found. After collecting the sample, the Perseverance rover kept exploring the river valley to get a better idea of the environment where those rocks formed, and to figure out how those leopard spots might have appeared. That step matters because knowing exactly how the spots came to be is key to figuring out if the rock really holds signs of life. In other words, did those patterns form through normal chemical processes that don't need life at all? Or were they actually left behind by microbes? What the rover's instruments found is that the rocks in this area are made of clay and silt, which is exciting. Because here on Earth, those materials are great at preserving signs of ancient microbial life. The rocks are also packed with organic carbon, sulfur, oxidized iron, and phosphorus. And you know who loves that stuff? Microbes! Experts think they could have used those ingredients as an energy source, and in the process, left behind the leopard spots we can now see in high-resolution images. Remember when I said these marks might be a microbe's leftovers, right? That's exactly it. Picture you're eating a burger called the Galaxy Burger that has a one-of-a-kind sauce. A drop of that sauce falls on the table. You don't clean it up and a second later, poof, you disappear. Later, detectives show up trying to figure out if you were there. All they find is that sauce drop you left over. From that, they can tell exactly what you were eating the Galaxy Burger. But proving you were really there is tricky, since that sauce could have ended up there in lots of other ways. The same goes for the leopard spots. Just by looking at them, scientists can already tell a few things. For example, the pattern shows the presence of two iron-rich minerals, vivianite and griagite. On Earth, vivianite often turns up in sediments near decaying organic matter or in swampy, soggy wetlands. In a similar way, microbes can also produce griagite on our planet. When you find those two together, it looks like they've formed through electron transfer reactions between the sediment and organic matter. 
that could be a fingerprint of microbial life because microbes use those reactions to get energy and grow. So going back to our burger comparison, the leopard spots are like the sauce on the table, the leftovers from the process of getting energy. But that's not the only theory. The team also spotted the possible presence of hematite in the rock. And if Mars has the nickname, the red planet, hematite is the one to blame. It's a heavy mineral that can take on a reddish tone. On Earth, people have been using it as a pigment for paint for thousands of years. Now, scientists think the leopard spots may have formed when chemical reactions with hematite turned parts of the rock from red to white. That process can release iron and phosphate and possibly cause those black rings to appear. And here's the kicker. Those reactions can also provide an energy source for microbes. For now, though, these are just theories. What we can confirm is that those chemical compounds are definitely present in the rocks. But just like in the detective story, finding the sauce drop doesn't prove it came from you. So even though these materials are great for microbes to thrive on, it doesn't automatically mean this is a biosignature. They could have also formed abiotically, or put simply, without the presence of life. Yeah, it could happen, but for it to happen naturally, without microbes involved, you'd need two things, high temperatures and acidic conditions. That's the only way those chemical processes could do their magic and leave behind the leopard spots. And here's the exciting part. Scientists didn't find any sign that these Martian rocks were ever exposed to high heat or acidic conditions. That's why I said they're stumped. They just can't find another explanation. So this has to be a biosignature, right? Well, maybe not. Because there's still a possibility that organic compounds could react even under low temperatures. And maybe, just maybe, we're seeing that happening for the very first time. That's why it's so hard to confirm 100% whether this is the handiwork of ancient microbes or just a natural process. So, in the end, we're still left with more questions than answers. Right now, this precious sample is safely sealed inside a tube millions of miles away on Mars. Hopefully, one day, it'll be brought back to Earth so scientists can study it in labs here. And while we can't confirm it's a biosignature just yet, one thing is certain. This finding by Perseverance is the closest we've ever come to discovering life on Mars. Honestly, just being able to spot a potential biosignature on the red planet is already groundbreaking. Another reason this finding matters has to do with the age of the rock. This evidence comes from some of the youngest sedimentary rocks we've ever studied. Until now, scientists thought that if we ever found signs of ancient life on Mars, they'd most likely be locked inside much older rocks. But so far, nothing has shown up in those ancient formations. Finding a possible biosignature in a young rock suggests two things. First, Mars might have been habitable for longer or later in its history than we ever thought. And second, older rocks might also hold signs of life, but maybe they're just harder to spot. Someday, our technology could be advanced enough to find them. This discovery also makes us think about one of the biggest questions of all, and that is, are we truly alone in the universe, or did we just find the answer? No, not exactly, but it's the closest humanity has ever come to answering that question. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.